going to look at a little technique that will help us with some complicated integrals. It's called integrated integration by substitution. So right now, if we had to do this question, you would have to multiply this thing out 50 times and then multiply it by 2x to get this big long polynomial because really all we know how to do at this point is take integrals of stuff like x to the power of 5. We can do that. That would be x to the 6 over 6 plus c. But if it turns out if we do a, a substitution in this particular question, that the question will get simplified immensely. So I'm going to let some new variable u, and this is very similar to the chain rule, only it's opposite because we're doing integration. But I'm going to let u equal the innermost part of this function. So I'm going to let u equal x squared plus 1. And so then my function, or my new integral, will look like u to the power of 50 times 2x dx. The problem I have here is I have two different variables, u and x still. And I really only can have one variable. I want everything written in terms of u, so I don't want any x's here at all. So if I took this um, substitution that I did, u equal x squared plus 1, and I simply take the derivative of u with respect to x, then this will equal 2x, and the derivative, of course, of 1 is 0. So now, if I multiply both sides of this expression by dx, I would have du equals 2x dx. And now isolating dx in this little expression, I would get dx whoops, equals du divided by 2x. So now I have the integral of u to the power 50 times 2x, but I'm going to replace dx with du divided by 2x. So now instead of integrating with respect to x, I'm going to integrate with respect to u. But I still want to make sure I have everything in terms of u. Well, it just so happens that this question works out nicely that those x's cancel out. So I just have the integral of u to the power 50 with respect to u. And so this is what you want with substitution. We're going to change everything that was in terms of x and write it now in terms of u with respect to u. So this obviously is not going to work for every situation. If this question here had an x squared here instead of a 2x, we'd be in trouble because x squared would not cancel out entirely with, with the 2x down here. So these questions are rigged, so to speak, so that substitution works. And so let's carry on. Let's actually integrate here now. So integrating this would be u to the power of 51 divided by 51, of course, plus c. And then finally, I can replace my u. So u was actually x squared plus 1. So that would be x squared plus 1, all to the power of 51, divided by 51, plus c. So let's just summarize how substitution works again. You have to select and a part of this integral in terms of u. So let u equal some part of this integral. Now that's a little bit trial and error method. Like you might try one thing. If we let u equal 2x, things aren't going to work out very nice here. But usually the thing you let equal u is the inside part of, of some function. Um, so u equal x squared plus 1. Then the process that needs to happen next is everything in this integral must be replaced in terms of u. So we take the derivative of, of this, u equals x squared plus 1 becomes du dx is 2x. Isolate dx so that we can get rid of that and write things in terms of u. And at this point, things should cancel out nicely. So we have everything in terms of u, which will allow us to integrate. And then we can go back in and make our final substitution and write things in terms of x again. Let's look at another example here. How about the integral of cosine 
of 7x. Well, this one's fairly simple. We'll let u equal 7x. That seems like the thing to do. And now we would like to find out, um, we'd like to get rid of the dx here. So let's take the derivative of u with respect to x. du dx would be 7 here. So the change in x is the same thing as the change in u divided by 7. So we would replace dx with du over 7. This is really 1 7th, so I'm going to pull that constant through 1 7th. And now I can integrate. Integral of cosine u would be sine u, because the derivative of sine is cosine, plus our constant. And finally, so, uh, u is actually 7x. So we would get 1 7th times sine of 7x plus c. And of course, you could always take the derivative of this function and just confirm that it ends up being cosine 7x. Let's check out another example. How about this one? Well, maybe we will try u equals the square root of x. There's no point in letting u equal x because that's actually not changing anything. So that, that doesn't make sense. But let's try u equals the square root of x. So we would be like this, 1 over u sine u. So letting u equal root x, we would get, instead of 1 over root x sine root x, we get 1 over u sine u. And now we'll take the derivative of both sides. Remember root x is the same as x to the 1 half, so this would become 1 half x to the minus 1 half. And then we would have du equals 1 over 2 root x, because this is like root x in the denominator as well, with a negative exponent. And so dx equals 2 root x du. So isolating that would give us, would give us this. And you might look at this and say, well, whoa, nothing's canceling out here. Nothing's canceling out here. I still got x's. But remember, in this original one, this was 1 over root x. So maybe instead of replacing that one, if I just left this as root x, then we can actually see that those do indeed cancel out. And we'd be left with the integral of 2 sine u du. So if things don't work out perfectly at the end here, once you've done your substitutions all in, just double check. Is there something else we could have maybe done here? And in this case, if we left this one as root x, then that'll cancel nicely with this root x up top here. So I have the integral of 2 sine u du. Of course, moving the 2 out in front means I really just have to integrate uh, sine u. And let's see, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this would equal negative 2 cosine u plus c. The derivative of cos being negative sine, and the negative and negative would make the positive, so that's good. And then finally, we can replace u with root x. And we would get negative 2 cosine root x plus c. Let's look at another one here. This one looks pretty complicated. Um, let's try this innermost part again. 
u equals 3 minus 5t squared. So that would give us that would give us this. And hopefully when we take the derivative we'll be get be able to get rid of that t4. Oops. Derivative of 3 is 0, so this would be minus 10. Oh, that was a t5 there. 5t5. Whoops. So minus 25t4. Minus 25t4. So du equals negative 25t4 dx. dx is equal... Well, we've got all kinds of different things here. We're in terms of t, so this would be du dt. So dt equals du over negative 25t4. So this is looking okay. And dt would be du over negative 25t4. Those t4s will cancel out. And so we get the integral of 1 over negative 25 root u du. Let's bring out the negative 1 25th. And we'll write u as u to the 1 half. And now it's easy to integrate. So we will add 1 to this exponent and divide by the exponent. And so we get this. And then this would be multiplied by the reciprocal. And we would end up with negative 2 over 75. Now, what was u again? u was 3 minus 5t5. u was what? 3 minus 5t5. And then this whole, so that's the second root of this whole thing cubed, plus c. So there's, there's uh, that one finished off. And let's look at this one here. This is a, this is a toughie, this one. It looks simple, but this one's got a neat little trick to it. Turns out if we let u equal 1 minus x, that we would get the integral of x squared root u dx and taking the derivative of both uh, both sides would give us du dx equals negative 1 which means du equals negative 1 dx dx equals if you like du divided by negative 1 And so we get this divided by negative 1. So let's just put the negative out in front. Negative 1 integral x squared root u. And nothing cancels out here. However, we could always look back at our original expression. So u equaled 1 minus x. I could say then that bringing the x over here and the u over here, that x equaled um, 1 minus u. So I got x equals 1 minus u. And then I could square both sides. So this would give me x squared equals 1 minus u times 1 minus u, which is 1 minus 2u plus u squared. So I could then take this, because that's what x squared is, 
and put that in here and I would have an expression that is entirely in terms of u. So 1 minus 2u plus u squared times the square root of u du. And of course the square root of u I could actually write as u to the one half. And now I could simply multiply this into here, here, and here. So I would have u to the one half minus 2u to the power of 3 over 2 plus u, this would be 4 over 2, that would be 5 over 2 when you multiplied that in, du. And now we could just integrate. So negative bracket, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the exponent, add 1 to the exponent, now 5 over 2, divide by the exponent, and add 1 to the exponent, divide by the exponent, plus c. So we would have minus 3 over 2, u to the power of 3 over 2, minus Multiplying by the reciprocal here would give us 4 over 5, u to the power of 5 over 2, plus 2 over 7, u to the power of 7 over 2. I just realized I made a mistake right here. Added 1 to the exponent, 3 over 2, but I divided by the reciprocal, so that should have been 3 over 2 which, flipped around, makes this 2 over 3. That's why we always want to check our work here. Whoops, I made another little mistake here. Check that. That should have been... Hold on here, yes. Everything in this bracket's got to be multiplied by negative 1. So negative this, minus, minus, that would make that a plus. Minus, plus, would make this a negative, plus c. So this and this would give us u to the one-half, that's good. This and this, would the fives would cancel, we'd get 4 over 2, which is 2, that's good. This and this would cancel, and we'd subtract when we get 5 over 2, that's good. And that would be a negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, negative. Good. And then u was 1 minus x. So... Putting 1 minus x in for all of these u's. Would give us this as our final uh, answer to the integral of that question. So that's how we can use substitution uh, to help us integrate uh, some functions.